Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor James Daniels, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church located in Volula, Alabama. And we welcome you once again. Again, this is a new month filled with new blessings and God's favor and mercy. Listen, I just want to do a quick announcement. The first Sunday in April is our pastoral appreciation and we're celebrating six years of ministry and fellowship at Friendship Baptist Church. And I want to thank in advance all those who support the ministry, especially the congregation who supports and enjoy the fellowship that we have with one another. And it is a great opportunity to grow even more in the Lord. And I'm looking forward to the grand future of us having a fellowship and a marriage together as God has ordained. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for a new month, a new opportunity to praise and worship you. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing as we continue to take flight. Father God, as we continue to reset, as we have celebrated the resurrection on last Sunday, we thank you, Father God, for your provision and your plan of salvation. We thank you, Father God, for your presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. We realize, Father God, we can do nothing without you. We continue to pray, Father God, for our world and pray for our communities, pray for our church and also praying for our children. We ask you to continue to allow your light to shine so bright so others may be drawn out of darkness. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to spend time in your word through our weekly Sunday school lesson. We ask you now, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be acceptable in thy sight. For Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. For it is in all blessing we ask in thy son Jesus' name, we do pray and we do say amen, amen, and amen again. Again, this is part of our spring lessons, lesson number six, April the 7th, 2024, unit number two, the measure of faith. Our topic for this particular lesson, helping a friend in need, helping a friend in in need. And I, I begin to just think about our topic because it is true that we all need friends. We all need friends that we can count on. And, and if you allow me to just take the word friend just for a moment, we all need friends that are faithful. We all need friends who are respectful. We all need friends who are intercessors who intercedes for others. We also need friends who are encouragers. Listen, not the sun won't always shine and, 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 and every day won't be spent on top of the mountaintop, but it is in the valley that we need some encouragers and tell us that there is light at the end of the tunnel. But not only do we need encouragers, but we also need friends who will never give up on us. And lastly, we all need friends who are dependable. I, I always use the analogy, if you hold up one hand, can you really count how many true friends you have? We know we have a lot of friends, but the truth of the matter is when, when they call you or you call them, will they answer or will they ignore you? Listen, true friends will be there in times of trouble. A devotional reading, John chapter four, verse four through 18. Our background scripture is Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 26. And our printed passage is the same. Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 26. Our key verse reads, And behold, 
Men brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with a palsy. <coughs> and a salt means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Luke chapter 5, verse 18 through 19. Our lesson aims, number one, understand the importance of Christian friends in building up faith in Christ. Number two, value the encouragement and support that you can offer to your friends in faith. Number three, seek to create habits of compassionate and faith-filled action. Our key terms, number one, forgiven means left, alone, be, go or have, put or sent, away, remitted, yielded up or imperfect. Number two, heal means to cure, to make well or to make whole. Number three, paralyzed means afflicted with paralysis paralytic, i.e. suffering from the relaxing of the nerves of one side, sick of the palsy. Number four, Pharisees means members of a Jewish religious sect. A biblical context, Luke, a physician and Paul's companion authored the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. Although Luke dedicated both of his writings to a Roman dignitary named Theopolis, details in the narrative suggest that he had a larger audience in mind. Gentiles. Luke's Gospel includes several episodes from Jesus' life that the other Gospels omit. Luke is the only account that provides a detailed report of Jesus' birth, John the Baptist's conception, and anything about Jesus' boyhood. Luke portrays Jesus as the compassionate Son of God. Hence, a consistent theme and Luke's gospel is Christ's compassion for those often branded as outcasts in Israel, such as Gentile, Samaritan, women, children, sinners, and tax collectors. Luke shows that Jesus was indeed human and divine with a special love and concern for humanity. Primarily, Luke portrays Christ as the world's perfect Savior. The book of Luke's gospel is a meticulous account of Christ's ministry according to Luke chapter 5 through chapter 21. In his travels, Jesus taught, preached, healed the sick, and brought hope to the desperate and discouraged. He also confronted the Jewish religious establishment that followed, relentlessly opposed, attempted to trick and plot to kill him. The setting of this lesson is one of these hostile encounters. Our introduction. The Bible through the book of Proverbs speaks a lot about friendship. Proverbs 17 and 9 says, He that covers a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separate 
very friends. Proverbs 17 and 17, a friend loveth at all time, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18, 24, a man that has friends must shew himself friendly, and there is a friend that stick closer than a brother. Proverbs 22, verse 24 through 25 said, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Let thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. Proverbs 27 and 9, Ointment and perfumed rejoice the heart. So doeth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Friendship is a relation marked by mutual affection, esteem, intimacy, and trust. Good friendships are a reliable indicator of an individual overall health and happiness. For example, friends can help celebrate good times, provide support during bad times, prevent isolation and loneliness, and allow offering needed companionship in return. Medical research studies have shown or found that adults with strong social connection have a reduced risk of many significant health problems. Much have been written sung and portrayed about the blessings and benefits of having friends. Depending on your generation, you may recall songs like Lean On Me, You've Got A Friend, or what, or what About Your Friends, or What A Friend We Have In Jesus. For all that virtue, Friendships demand time, effort, and people who are willing to put others first sometime. However, the benefits of a genuine friendship makes the efforts worthwhile. One memorable example of friendship is the gospel account of four friends who refused to allow any condition or obstacle to prevent getting their sick friend to Jesus to find healing and spiritual wholeness. What about you? Are you willing to get your sin sick friends and bring them to church so they can meet Jesus, so they can be healed and make whole? Listen, Jesus is still the answer to the world's problem today. Listen, human beings were created to be relational. Therefore, meaningful re friendship are an important part of our lives. Friends can console and assist others in times of need or trouble. People need a support system when trying to navigate or overcome life obstacles. How can our friendship Lend strength and support to others who are in crises. Jesus celebrated the faith and tenacity of the four friends who helped another friend find healing and wholeness. In our first outline, friendship finds a way. Friendship finds a way. Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. And verse 17 reads, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by.
which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Verse 18, and behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus, verse 20, and when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. <coughs> Luke chapter five, verse 17 through 26, records Jesus' second miracle after the first call of his disciples. True to Luke's emphasis on his compassionate role as the son of man, according to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, Jesus had already healed a man with leprosy, according to Luke chapter 5, verse 12 through 15. At this point in his ministry, large crowds, including Pharisees and teachers of the law followed Jesus everywhere. Thus, while Jesus taught in Capernaum, many religious leaders from Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem were present, looking for an occasion to oppose him. Yet, while teaching, Jesus still possessed the spiritual ability to heal the sick. Amongst the assembled crowd were four men carrying a paralyzed friend, attempting to bring him in before Jesus for healing. Unable to enter the room, these men took their friend to the rooftop removed some towels and lowered him from the roof directly in front of Jesus. Luke does not indicate whether that was a verbal exchange between Jesus and these extraordinary friends, but their unselfish display of friendship was in an unspoken appeal for Jesus' response. Jesus recognized that the men's faith motivated them to act as they did. Consequently, but surprisingly, Jesus responded by first forgiving the man sinned instead of healing him. And many say you got to get to the root cause of the problem before you can look at the wholeness and the situation. So Jesus spoke to the root cause, which was the man sinned. In this context, Luke intends to show that Jesus had the authority to forgive sins and healed physically. The four friends demonstrated how Christian friendship can be the very support system someone needs to overcome life obstacles. A relevant side theme here is that God honors the faith of those who seek to bring others to Christ. In this season of selfish individualism, demonstrating biblical friendship is vitally important. Life uncertainties and tragedies have paralyzed and traumatized humanity within and without the faith community. Everyone stands to benefit from good friendship especially those that draw others closer to Christ for spiritual healing. My brothers and sisters, there's no greater joy to invite someone to taste and see 
that the Lord is good. Listen, we invite them to the restaurants that we have verified. We invite them to clothing outline that we have visited. So why not invite them to come see a man as the woman of the well attests to, that come see a man who told me all about my situations and problems. Our second and final outline, friendships reward. Friendships reward. Luke chapter 5, verse 21 through 26. Verse 21 reads, And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blaspheming? Who can forgive sin but God alone? 22. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Verse 23. Whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. Verse 24. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sin. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. Verse 25. And immediately he arose. Immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Verse 26. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. My brothers and sisters, Jesus' declaration that the man's sin were forgiven invoked a silent accusation of blasphemy, a claim to be God against him from the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Blasphemy was the core of charges this group lodged against Jesus and the motivation for their push to have him crucified. In their spiritual blindness, Jesus' enemies counted his claims of spiritual authority as groundless and worthy of capital punishment, which is death. Jesus discerned their thoughts and asked why they would think such a thing. Proving his authority to forgive sin, Jesus contradicted their thinking by healing the man, something the law, prophets, and other teachings claim only God had the power to do. The paralytic healing was instantaneous and he stood up before the crowd, picked up what he had been laying on and rejoiced, giving glory to God. This miracle amazed those who witnessed it and they joined the man in praising and glorifying God. Knowing that they had seen Something incredible. Although the crowd may have failed to understand the full implications of who Jesus was and is, they did recognize the awesomeness of God's presence and marvel what he had done. This great miracle became the visible reality because of the caring determination of four friends on behalf of a mutual friend who was in need. Because of his friends, the man was able to have an encounter with Jesus that resulted in spiritual and physical 
healing. The miracle proved Jesus' authority to forgive sin and heal and silence those who oppose him. Christians must not overlook the positive spiritual, physical, and emotional impact of a demonstrating agape love through genuine friendship. The capacity to display this love is related to an intimate and obedient relationship with Jesus Christ, the greatest friend of all. As we mature in Christ, his value becomes our. Among these value is the love expressed through friendship filled with compassion, faith, and sacrifice. Jesus reminds us in John chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you, my brothers and sisters, once God has healed and delivered us, once we have had an encounter with the living Christ, we ought to run and tell that. We ought to tell our friends, our family, our co-workers, all the people that we meet on a daily basis. We ought to tell them about a man named Jesus, how he healed us, delivered us, turned our world upside down, gave us another opportunity, wiped our slate clean, gave us a new chance to live again. We ought to run and tell that because it's the good news. It is the good news about Jesus, the Christ. So as we close out this lesson, my brothers and sisters, you don't have to look far beyond your current environment to discover someone who needs the help of a friend. Ask God to give you opportunities to use your unique spiritual resources to be the kind of friend who will help encourage and strengthen someone in need. People in this generation need more Christian friends to unify, encourage, and strengthen them in their faith. We're surrounded by lonely, hurting, and needy people in and beyond the church. The lesson challenges us to be intentional about developing high-quality friendship that let us use our gifts, talents, skills, to help someone else. The capacity for accomplishing this task first begins with our relationship with Christ. As we submit to him, his compassionate love and concern for others will impact how we relate to someone else. Listen, Christian friendship it's not a thought or a feeling. It is an action. As you reflect upon this lesson this week, identify someone at home, on the job, or in your community or church who needs physical, emotional, or spiritual support. Brainstorm and select ways to demonstrate true friendship by offering to meet a specific need with compassionate love. My brothers and sisters, Jesus has given us a command to go, to demonstrate this love, to teach, and to help others who are in need. Let us pray. Father God, we come thanking you for this lesson, thanking you with this encounter 
concerning the four friends who brought a mutual friend to you for healing and help. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to let our light shine so we too can help bring a friend out of darkness to your marvelous light. We thank you, Father God, for the outline of this lesson because the four friends didn't allow anything to hinder, no obstacles to get in their way in order to allow this paralytic man to have an encounter where you would heal his heal his sickness and also forgive his sin. We thank you, Father God, for this encounter. We ask you now, Father God, let us have opportunities in our daily walk to encounter those who are lonely and need help that we may introduce them to the living Christ. Help us to be a witness because of the testimonies you have given us. Because if you've done it for us, you can do it for someone else. Father God, there is no secret what you can do. And what you've done for others, surely you'll do for others. We thank you, Father, for this lesson. Bless it in a mighty way. Bless those that view it. Bless those that share it. Most of all, let, our, let us be about our Father's business, being a witness, Father God, through worship and through your word. For these and all blessings we ask in thy Son Jesus' name, we do pray and we do say amen, amen, and amen again. My brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that something was said through this lesson to encourage you. Again, in, inside the description box, there is a link there, a link that shows all of my devotional books. If you want to support the ministry, if you want daily encouragement, listen, there's ways that you can connect in order to allow us to be encouraged. It's an investment into your spiritual journey. Listen, my phone number is there if you want to reach out, if you want me to send you the link. It, everything, the information is inside the description box. I encourage you to use it to support the ministry. My brothers and sisters, I thank you for the time that have been spent through the word. It is my prayer that you will continue to pray for the ministry, pray for my church family, pray for uh, more years to come that I may pastor the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Listen, I pray that God will uh, do what only he can do, which is allowing us to have fellowship one with another. So my brothers and sisters, our time have been good. It has been profitable. And most of all, it has been relevant. So until the next time, I say God bless you. May God keep you and be good.